Ivory Black. She opens the curtains, but pulls the shears closed. She dresses as if mourning all of the morning to keep her small flame of love from being extinguished by the harsh glare of the world. She needs no one's approval but her own. She sits on her window seat writing poems in her journal in between worlds, inhabiting a liminal space inside her mind, not grieving, not pining, not longing, not hiding, just protecting what she secretly hoped someone might find. Someone who could see that light behind her impassive facade. The self is not cultivated by sharing, rather by watering oneself with the precious dew of solitude. Drop by drop, distilled and true, soothing and slaking and hydrating and sweet, a self welling spring, depthless and cool, with walls of fine grain limestone. The microscopic fossils whisper ancient secrets and infuse the water with untranslatable mysteries of the origins and vagaries of life. We burn wood to make charcoal, we burn bones to make pigment. We burn stones to make lime. We, the crude alchemists of fire. The tree of life fossilized. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil heaped up the corpses of the natural sacrifice of hard learning and set them ablaze over and over again in every war and in every church because the knowledge of abundance and of self-renewing life was turned away from. We wander the earth like savages and scavengers, like vultures and vulpines, eating our meals while looking ravenously to the left and to the right with suspicion and avarice protecting what we already have and causing the very poverty we feel and inflicting it upon our brothers and sisters. And so she keeps her own counsel sitting in the window between the light of men and the light of God blooming in the dusk, a dark flower that seeks no pollinator but rather releases a scent and sweet musk to the no one there, perfuming the air and settling like dust on untouched surfaces. She makes no appeal for a consort and no concessions to lust. There's no place she has to go, nothing that she must do, except to be true to an inner pull connecting heart and hand, numbering the stars like sand, finite but innumerable at the end of the land, where we make a stand between convention and surrender to the grandeur of the uncharted and unnamed space between thinking and knowing. She stays busy sowing heart-shaped seeds of devotion to the singular notion of awakening to the oneness we could hold in our hands if only we dropped our tools and schemes and plans and reached out to join the dance that is the earth spinning, spinning and the birds singing and the waves lapping and the moon mapping in ivory and black the days of our lives without turning back to see its own shadow. As the hourglass empties for one life and fills for another, so the turning of souls from child to mother, ivory black, knows the sweetness of sour, the bitterness of hours 
wasted in diversions, trivial excursions into the wastrel lives of others. She squeezes the coiled coal of her darkened heart until her hand aches and the beating stops in order to, to transform drop by drop her very blood into quicksilver and her heart into a stone of perfect clarity to refract the sun's singularity of perfect eternal charity. The refining fire of truth she seeks no proof for what she knows and what she uncovers and sometimes scrawls and sometimes ciphers and books that she numbers because words fail and falter and cannot depose an angel's testimony received in whispered repose at the multi-paned altar of her window seat.